Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Summer here to discuss the genius of the periodic table. The goals for this lesson is that students will be able to explain that the periodic table is in, arranged in periods and groups slash families by the atomic number. The periods are the horizontal and the groups families are the vertical columns on the periodic table and then also identify some of the patterns on the periodic table. Go to Google Classroom under the assignment for this Ed Puzzle. There, this video, The Genius of Mendeleev's Periodic Table, will be linked. So pause this video, go watch that video, and then come back to this Ed Puzzle to answer the questions. So how can the periodic table be so predictable? The periodic table is organized by atomic number, The behavior between the nucleus, the atomic number, which is the number of protons, and the electrons determines the element's behavior. So we'll look at some of the groupings in this lesson. In future lessons, we will look at trends. So make sure you have the periodic table ready to add some notes to, the one that you um, should have in a sheet protector or in your folder. If not, they are in the blue file folder in my classroom. So the periods on the periodic table are the rows. They're arranged by increased um, atomic number, and they have the same number of energy levels. So boron has the same number of energy levels as fluorine, even though fluorine has more protons than boron. And because in the same row, it's the same energy level. So the groups or families are the columns on the periodic table. They behave alike, so that means that their like, reactions are fairly similar. Um, look at the pattern. If I draw Bohr models of the elements in group families, you see they have the same number of valence electrons, but different number of energy levels. So there's a couple different groups on, or families on the periodic table that have specific names. The alkali metals are right here and they are highly reactive because they want to give their way their one valence electron the alkaline earth metals they're still fairly reactive because they want to give away their two valence electrons and those are the alkaline earth metals the halogens are over on this side and they're extremely reactive because they only need one valence electron to complete their octet the noble gases, they're not reactive because they already have a full valence shell. You'll hear me talking about the noble gases as the cool kids, how everybody on the periodic table wants to be like them. And they want to be like them because they have a full valence shell. So rem metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. So where we have every, most elements on the periodic table are metals. They lose electrons to become positively charged. Nonmetals, which are the stuff over in orange, and then hydrogen. Hydrogen ends up over here on the periodic table because it has one valence electron, but it's actually a nonmetal. And nonmetals gain electrons to become negatively charged particles. And then metalloids behave in the middle and will have some. Um, properties of nonmetals and some properties of metals, depending. And then this is the line for metalloids. The periodic table that you see and you're familiar with look like this, um, typically. But it actually looks like this, where those bottom series, that F orbital, is actually in here. But for printing purposes, they moved that block all the way down to the bottom. So you should color in your periodic table very similar, the one that you have, similar to um, this one here. And then so you are coloring your alkali metals green, your earth metals blue, your metalloids are purple. You're going to outline or you're going to shade in with light pink the lanthanide and actinide series. And your halogens are going to be orange. 
your noble gases are going to be yellow. And then in outline, you're going to outline your periodic table with green and then your, your S block in green. You're going to outline your P block in red and your D block in blue and your F block in pink.